Hello everyone and welcome back to In the Greenhouse, our Q&A rambling series where you guys ask me questions in the comments of these videos and I provide the answers in future videos while we sit here in my greenhouse and the beautiful game Plant Tycoon, one of my favorite games of all time, super relaxing. We're just gonna kind of perch here and try to catch a few bugs. Oh, look at the beautiful butterfly, get my net. Ah, I chased it away. Okay, and you do have to have a pretty fancy net. The fancier the net you buy, the easier it is to catch the bugs. But to be able to buy fancy nets, you need to grow fancy flowers. And to grow fancy flowers, you need to sell them in the nursery so that you can buy more, like better soil and breed the different plants together and get rare seeds. Basically, it's amazing and everything I absolutely love in a plant breeding game. It's from Last Day of Work who also did the Lost Villagers or what did they call it? Ah, yeah, I think it's the Lost Villager games. Absolutely loved those games. They did Virtual Family. Virtual Villagers! That's the game. And they also have done Virtual... Um Okay, this plant is unhealthy and producing seeds. They've also done several other games. I absolutely love them and I have loved them for a long time. So I always recommend their games if you're just looking for something kind of classic and relaxing to sit down and settle in with. So let's go ahead and we're going to settle in today. Let's put that little seed up there. Any other seeds over here? Nope. All right, you produce some seeds before you die. Look at this beautiful Knox lemon bush. <gasps> and there's so many new plants since we were last here. And that is because I actually recorded several rambling episodes, but they were too rambling because they were at two in the morning, two and three in the morning when I had insomnia over the upcoming move that I'm currently on. As you guys know, right now I'm sitting in more or less a completely packed and semi-empty apartment in North Carolina as we are getting ready for our stuff to be loaded onto a moving truck today and being transported up to Michigan about a week ahead of time before we move up to Michigan. So we're going to be joining our stuff in a week. We have just a fold-out table with my recording equipment, the geckos, and a blow-up mattress, and like bare minimum on on like utensils and plates and everything that we need to survive on and kind of camp out in our old apartment for a week. So it's really interesting and if you guys want to actually see these things physically then you can go over to the vlog channel because I'm going to do my best to start at least vlogging a couple times a week. <laughs> I want to vlog a lot because next year this time I'm going to be in Taiwan with Chips and it's going to be amazing. Uh, Chips is a Chinese historian. He is getting his PhD in that right now and so we'll be traveling through large parts of Asia in the future. Over the next six years, the time it's going to take to get his PhD, we will be traveling so much. And I just think it would be such a pity, especially from my very bad memory, to not whip out my camera and record and vlog as much of the experience as possible and then maybe share it with some of you guys. Because I know, just like last time I talked about how I realized these rambles in the rambling series are totally fine to do because it's about companionship and it's about unwinding with the beautiful music and a voice and stories for a while. I know that is very soothing for me on a day-to-day -day emotional level, listening to other people do the same thing. And then I know that watching people vlog and people who I feel like I can relate to, not like super famous celebrities, but like kind of your average person, watching them vlog and go on big adventures makes me feel like that is attainable for me as well. So hopefully doing those things on my vlog channel for you guys will kind of feel the same. You guys will feel like, oh, look at what Siri is up to. Maybe I could go on big adventures like that too. Maybe it's possible for me too. And I see a lot of posts like on Twitter from a lot of people I follow who are just like, people in our community who I follow because I think they're cool who say the same thing all the time like watching people's vlogs actually makes them feel like maybe their life can get together maybe they can have their projects advance maybe if they just can hold stick it out for like a few weeks on a new habit they're trying to form they can hold in there and, and do it too and I think that's amazing it's very much like when I first heard about vlogging and when I first heard about this idea of watching people's lives on YouTube, it was like, what is that? Like some sort of TLC cheap ripoff meets like America's Funniest Video sort of thing. And a lot of the vlogs that you first see when you start searching for those kinds of things on YouTube are, they feel really scripted. They feel kind of artificial. They feel very, very staged. And it took me a long time to start finding just your average person and their life and the average person who it's, it's like, oh yes, both those flowers sold, look at all of our money. But like a lot of people would be like, oh, why would I want to watch like your average person and their daily life? And to me, it's about that sense of companionship, kind of like the monkey see monkey do thing I've talked about before, where if you see somebody else achieve something, you can go, hey, maybe that's possible for me too. And it feels really good. 
All right, so hang on just a second. We're gonna put these Nox lemon bushes away. Ooh, I think this is a bamboo seed. Ooh, that plant's worth quite a bit. Nice, you keep producing. This plant is nice and mature and ready to go. Do I have any more of those rosy rose seeds? So not this guy. So these little circles make these kinds of seeds. So I'm gonna go ahead and pollinate him with himself so we can get more of those. Ah, oh, this viola bamboo is like going out. Oh my gosh, I don't think I can support these guys. So we're just gonna go ahead and see if we can sell them like ASAP. All right, and then what about this Nox lemon bush? I don't think we can support the Nox lemon bushes right now either. So let's see, we'll try selling that because we don't have fancy enough soil and fancy enough water. Some of these plants are very finicky and their health will just nosedive if we don't have the proper kinds of uh, the proper kinds of soil and the proper kinds of water. We just have basic organic soil and like water from the sink right now. <laughs> it's just very plain. It's, it's water from the faucet and then you can upgrade to um, water that it makes plants more resistant to disease and then eventually you can upgrade to this fancy water from a hidden spring on an island <gasps> look at the little frog seed ah oh, it's an extinct seed we could buy if we had more money that's so cool okay let's see if we can sell these guys before they die <laughs> so we'll sit here and perch here and i'll ramble at you guys for a minute but yeah when i first heard about vlogging I, I thought it was really staged and kind of weird and awkward. It made me feel uncomfortable because it's like, ah, I don't know these people. Why am I, why do I care about the details of what they bought today? And that's kind of the other thing. Often it boils down into like shopping hauls and I feel so detached from that because I actually try to lead a very anti-materialistic life. I try very hard to like purge the amount of stuff I have. I really believe in being frugal. And I, I guess it comes back to when I made my main channel when I made my gaming channel I loved some of the let's plays I was finding but I felt like I couldn't quite find what I really wanted to see which was like focusing on plants and animals in in video games and in the natural world yes somebody bought that dying plant huzzah maybe they're gonna take it home and like frantically repot it like like sometimes I'll do I'll see a plant on clearance like at Walmart or Kroger or something and it's dying on its last leg like a dollar so I'll buy it and take it home put it in new soil new pot and it survives just fine hang in there little plants but yeah when I first uh, started my my gaming channel I kind of had the same feeling I guess I do for my vlog channel where I was like well this is cool and I really like some of the stuff I'm finding but most of the stuff I don't feel connected to so maybe I'll just make what I feel connected to and I think I need to look at that with vlogging as well because it feels much more personal because it is much more personal you don't have the game as the thing that you're discussing with your audience you have your life and the old me would have been petrified by that. The old me was so shy and so socially anxious that I would have panic attacks going to the grocery store, that I wouldn't go on walks because I was worried people would see me uh, like <laughs> through their windows and they'd be judging like, who's that fat, ugly girl walking down the street? How dare she try to improve her life and go on a walk? So I wouldn't go. And so it's kind of amazing to see all these years later, if you would have told socially anxious, terrified me, hey, you're gonna not only like talk to thousands of people every day because you absolutely love it. Not only is it your job, but it's the thing you adore doing. It's the thing you crave doing. You love doing this. But if I would have told that person like, you're not only gonna like talk to those people, you're gonna show them your daily life. You're gonna show them the plants you see. You're gonna share your animals with them. You're gonna share your growth and your struggles and your failures and your triumphs with them. And you're gonna love it. I would not have believed you. So I think that's kind of one of the fun things of sharing the story in the first place is I know for a fact that so many of our audience members, audience is weird. I hate that word. I hate audience. I prefer community because that's what it is. But so many of our community members are also very shy or they struggle with a lot. And when you see somebody who you can kind of relate to or you know that they're not super fancy whiz bang, they're just a normal person, succeed in life, I feel like it gives you hope. So that's why I'm going to be brave enough to do it, you guys. So I'll figure it out. I think that's kind of the thing I've been struggling with with the vlog channel is just making sure I show up and do it. And then making sure it's just what I want to see and not thinking so hard about like, well, how does this compare to the way you're supposed to do it? I didn't think about that when I started my gaming channel. I just thought, how do I want to do it? What do I like saying? And now we're here. So I encourage you guys, if you're taking on a new project or you're doing something new, it's helpful to get ideas. It's helpful to kind of understand the basic idea of a format of what your project, like the basic idea of what a good YouTube video is. But that doesn't mean you have to only do things one way. 
Do the thing that you're hungry for. Do the thing that you want to see more of. Do the thing that make create what you really want. And you'll probably find other people wanted the same thing. So it's totally worth totally worth focusing on that. Anyway, I'm rambling quite a bit, but that's what this is for. But let's move on to some of the questions why I sit here crossing my fingers that people will buy these dying plants. Maybe, maybe if I make them really cheap. Somebody die! It's like it's literally about to die. I want to get some money from this thing. No, I don't have enough. I don't have enough space. Oh no, what am I going to do? Here, have some water. Have some water. Okay, there we go. And we'll chuck another one of these plants in here. I guess I'll just have to sell the seed. All right, so these noxes are worth quite a bit if I can just, like they're worth quite a bit if I can just get them to survive. So I need better water, I think, or fancier soil. Ah. <sighs> All right, but let's move on to some of the questions and thank you guys so much for asking so many questions. I get so excited. If you guys have any kind of random question, what's your favorite slime rancher slime? Like, what's your favorite way to eat bamboo? I don't I don't care what it is. I just love hearing your questions. So feel free to ask them and I will ramble forward. I'm probably going to be doing quite a few of these videos as we go through the move because it's very hard to focus on a lot of our more intensive series when there's so much going on in life right now like waiting for the movers to show up they were supposed to show up yesterday they actually got locked out of their truck um yesterday because u-haul closed at one and they showed up at two to go get the stuff and they're like oh we can't get into the building and they were so apologetic but they're going to show up today but there's little little adventures that kind of throw my regular schedule off and these are very relaxing to make so expect quite a few of in the greenhouse episodes as we wiggle through the move and then regain our ground and regain uh having some solid ground under our feet for scheduling after it's over all right, so a really awesome question from Just a Silly Girl, who has been a member of our community in, for so, 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 so long now, who asks, when did you begin joy journaling? And this is actually the question that I remembered this morning when I was thinking, well, I have a few hours before the movers show up. What should I do? Because this is a really cool question, you guys. For those of you who don't know, joy journaling is something I do every single day. Some days I miss it because I fall asleep and I'm just too exhausted or I forget. It does happen that I will forget from time to time. Let's see if I plant that. Well, I think it'll be okay. Let's plant these guys and then sell this guy. And I'm going to ramp the price up on that guy. All right. Everybody else doing okay? Anybody need water? A few of you guys need water. But yeah, joy journaling is something I do every day. I have a journal. It's called my joy journal. And I fill out three moments at least. That's my, my bare minimum is every single day I write down three things about that day that made me feel joyful. And it changed my life. It utterly transformed my life. I talk about it all the time over on the vlog channel. But uh, joy journaling started, I'll tell you guys how it started and then I'll tell you guys how it changed my life after that. For those of you who don't know, because like I said, I talk about it a lot in the, the vlog channel. But joy journaling started because my mom went back to school the same time I went to college for the first time. We actually went to the same college for a little bit. And she, it was a really big college too. And she took a positive psychology class. And oh gosh, that sold really quickly. I will ramp up their price in the future. Excuse me, I'm just going to make this a little bit more expensive. Because wow, people apparently like, I'm watering an empty pot. But yeah, my mom went back to school and she went back to school for psychology and she has a degree in psychology now. I actually got to celebrate my mom going to school um, for finishing her degree years and years after she had all of her kids. And we'll sit here now because we don't have anything to sell. So we'll try to catch some bugs. But yeah, my mom was going to school in Hawaii when she met my dad and... <laughs> She ended up falling in love and deciding, you know what? Oh, well, let's try selling this little guy and actually cutting this. Oh, I killed it! I killed it dead! I can't sell it because I killed it dead. Whoops, never mind that. But yeah, anyway, I'll tell the story about my mom going back to school a different day. You guys can ask questions about that if you're curious. But my mom uh, did go back to school. Gotcha at the same time that I went to school. So we would actually often meet on campus for lunch or things like that. And one of the classes that she was taking was her positive psychology class. She was studying psychology and she has a degree now in psychology with a um, like master's certificate in um, autism specialist. 
like I forget exactly what it's called but basically she's an autism specialist because both my brothers have autism and she remembers how difficult it was growing up especially 20 years ago with a child with autism and she wanted to try to help other parents who needed that that kind of help and she didn't have that help back then and now there's so many resources and the world has changed and it's wonderful and fantastic but she loved her positive psychology class and that's really big because my mom suffers from depression, tremendous depression, life altering, world shaking, deep to the core, canyon level depression. I, I, if I think of anything about my whole childhood and my whole life, it's that I love my mother and it's so hard to know who she is past her depression. So when she started this positive psychology class and suddenly I saw this really bubbly, uh, cheerful, creative woman appearing in my mom, I was like, what on earth is this? <laughs> Who are you? I, I really, I want to learn more about you. I want to see more of the smiling. I want to hear more of your giggling. Tell me more, mom. So I would go to the classes with her. I would go to those positive psychology classes with her because one of the things about professors is that they usually, I would say 98% of the percent of the professors I've ever known, including the wonderful professor who I live with and share my life with, Chips, does not mind if you show up to their class as long as you are respectful, you contribute if you're asked to, and you don't if you're asked not to. You can sit there and you can just listen to whatever the lecture is. And that's a really great way to expand your mind. It's a really great way to learn some new things. And the positive psychology professor loved having new people come in because she was trying very hard to teach people how to include more positivity in their life and how to realize the things that they could control in their life, the happiness that you can control. I believe the there's actually several wonderful books um, that were based on a lot of science written by several psychologists that we would read for that class. And one of them talks about like the happiness principle, I believe is the, the name of the book. It's actually written by a psychologist. We studied it and we used it as as a textbook in that class. So it's not one of those self-help books that you can go out and buy and it's kind of foofy. It's a legit deal. And we talked about it extensively in class and how like 60% of your happiness is the amount that you have to control. And it's still more than half. The rest of it is kind of based on your life circumstances and the rest of it is kind of based around like your genetics and your, your like current social class and your opportunities and the bigger things that may be going on around you but you have 60% control. And one of those aspects of control over your life, your happiness, your sense of positivity and growth is your sense of gratitude. So I remember sitting in those lecture chairs and listening to her and going through the slides and glancing over at my mom and her eyes just getting so sparkly and so excited. And one night my mom turned to me and she went, let's start some, some gratitude journals. And so that was one of the things she had to do for that class. She had to keep a gratitude journal and she had to keep it for the whole semester. And so she bought me a journal and she bought herself a journal. And some nights I would write and go in and we'd share what we had written down. And some nights I would go in there and my mom would be staring into space and she would just turn to me and she's like, tonight I'm grateful I don't live in a war zone. And that would be like the only thing she'd write down. Or some nights she would look at me and she'd be like, sliced bread exists. And that's what she would write down. <laughs> and some nights it was like pages and pages of things about like, I love my husband. I love my family. I'm so happy to be going back to school. Like those would be the things that she would write down. And for me, some days it would be like, I like my cat. And some days it would be pages and pages and pages of things I loved about myself. And that was a huge deal for both of us because that was the first time that we both kind of turned inward and tried to think about what we were grateful for, even on the worst days, even on the worst days. And it's taken me a while to realize it, but until the joy journal entered my life and I actually had to consciously think about things that I was grateful for and think about things that I loved for the sake of a class assignment too, I really had a very negative line of thinking. There were a lot of terrible things going on in my life at that time that I can kind of excuse myself for it wasn't like I was just trying to be a negative Nancy and trying to be sourpuss. There were a lot of really bad things going on at that time in my life. Really, really, really terrible things that I look back on and I'm kind of stunned I got through. But I think the joy journal is what changed everything. I think the joy journal and that sitting in that lecture chair, going to those classes with my mom, and then both of us kind of knocking our heads together 
both of us being in really difficult places in our lives and both of us trying to think about the things that we were still grateful for even on really bad days it gave it gave me an entirely new script in my head an entirely new way to look at life an entirely new way to think and i really love that it started with my mom and it started with that practice so that's where the joy journaling began when my mom went to positive psychology classes and i watched her change in these tiny subtle ways and i wish i could tell you guys that we both went down the same path and because i started joy journaling i feel like i really gained that sense of reality of realization that realization of just how that 60 percent control is in my life on choosing how to react on choosing how to be happy. I think that the happiness principle, joy journaling, and reading the seven habits of a highly effective family, not person, but family. The other ones didn't do anything for me, but family transformed my life. Reading that book. I think those are the things. Oh my gosh, it's the beautiful rose lemon bush. Yes, please. Oh, and it's a butterfly. I think those things are what utterly changed my life. If I had to tell anybody to go and read something, I would insist on the seven habits of a highly effective family first. I feel like that was one of the most utterly transformational and important books I have ever had the opportunity to read. Um, let's go ahead and let's put you, let's pollinate you with you maybe. Um, and yeah, and, and to do joy journaling. I don't know if, okay, let's try, ah, I missed that bug. I don't know how I could explain it, you guys, but if you, no matter what circumstances you're under, if you can come up with three things you're grateful for every day, and some days it feels like you're in a battle. I'm not going to lie. I'm not, I'm not saying that this is like you're sitting down with this cute little journal every day and you're like, dear diary, I'm so happy today. Some days I would be sitting there like having screamed my lungs out, fury in my veins, fire in my heart like anger and bitterness roiling off of me, glaring at this journal in my lap, clenching a pin so hard it hurt. And then you clench your teeth and you open it up and you're like, today I'm grateful for, and you force yourself to write three things. And when it feels like you're engaging in battle to do that, or you feel like your heart is so broken and you're sobbing and there's tears staining the ink while you're writing, it transforms you on the most deepest level I can think about, the most deep emotional level to make yourself do that, to still turn around in the face of heartbreak, turn around in the face of fury and anger and come up with things that you can be grateful for. It makes you powerful. You may think that it sounds like it's just nothing, like it wouldn't do anything to you. It sounds like maybe it would just be silly or ridiculous, but when you can turn around and no matter the situation, dig your feet in, square your shoulders and find something to be grateful for and to celebrate in life, no matter what's happening, it gives you the most power I've had in my entire life. It makes you feel like you can knock down an entire mountain with your sheer will. So I highly recommend it, not because it's foo-foo-y, not because it's just something to do so that you can try to be a cheerful, optimistic person who's always smiley. Somehow it made me that person over many, many, many years, but it's definitely something to do. So if you want to feel like you have control and power over your own life, that honestly was the key for me. That being more organized and kind of the stuff in the seven habits of a highly effective family. Again, I've read the like the person in the teen books. I was given the seven habits of a highly effective teen book as a gift um, when I was a teenager. And I was like, it didn't really do anything for me. Um, I thought it was kind of sugary sweet. And I've read the person and that didn't really do anything for me. And the family clicked 100%. And that may be because I'm very family oriented and I love my family. But that book changed my life and Joy Journaling changed my life. And now that I'm sitting here having rambled about it and thought about it, Honestly, joy journaling made me more powerful. It gave me control over my life. It continues every single day to give me control over my life. The movers didn't show up yesterday. They were late. It threw my schedule off. Am I upset? Am I sitting here like, oh, look at those beautiful flowers. Yes, blue star lemon bush. You're so pretty. Do I already have you? But yeah, am I sitting? Yeah, I do already have you. Okay, well, I'm going to cross pollinate you with this guy. Yes, ta-da. 
I'm not sitting here furious. I'm not sitting here like fussy and angry about the fact that the movers didn't come. Instead, I just went, okay. And I sat down yesterday and I had other things to write about in my joy journal. I wrote about the fact that, hey, the movers didn't come, but now all the back, the boxes are prepared and packed and we're ready to go. So we aren't going to be in a rush last minute when they show up tomorrow. Hey, that gave us some free time. So Chips and I went and we decided to get some vegan cupcakes from Whole Foods. Hey, that gave us some free time so we got to hang out with his mom yesterday and that's really great because soon we won't be able just to pop across the street and go visit her so yeah i uh, i know it sounds sugary syrupy sweet and a lot of people would roll their eyes and be like joy journaling i am tough manly man i am tough manly woman i, I am tough womanly tough woman whatever you want to be i'm tough non-binary person i don't care I'm saying you may say that you're not the kind of person, you're, you're too far in, you're too dark, you're in too much of a hole. You think that sounds dumb. You think that joy journaling just isn't like, it doesn't make any sense. How could being grateful for things? Your life sucks right now. I don't understand the pain you're in. I don't understand the dark holes that you have found yourself in. How will you ever climb out? And that's how you climb out. Joy journaling was kind of like, it started for me when I was in my absolute worst. Looking back on those times, it, it chills my heart to the, like the core, thinking how I endured what I went through back then. It, it's so bad that like that's the kind of stuff I won't tell you guys probably ever because stuff was that terrible back then. And yet joy journaling is what get, like kind of braided the rope to let me climb up out of it. And then somehow it didn't stop. It just kept going. And now I'm, I'm the person I'm at. I feel like it transformed me on every level of who I am. And it didn't happen overnight. That's the other thing. And that's where the story kind of diverges. And I can kind of show you guys, you know me, you guys know me pretty intimately, kind of more than a lot of my family members do because you're with me and I'm with you so often. And you know the kind of personality I've become. And you've even been, some of you have been able to see a change over the last couple of years in my sense of control and confidence and strength over my life. And you've seen how I've crafted that kind of out of thin air by building up a YouTube channel, by just cultivating myself on a personal level by building up my confidence through like trial and error so that's kind of that's kind of that you you know who I am and I'm telling you I've gotten here primarily because of joy journaling so let's talk about what happens when you don't continue it for years I've joy journaling really didn't begin to change me on a fundamental level until probably almost a year after starting and probably sooner than that, but I didn't notice it on like a night and day kind of transformational level until about a year later. And I have several joy journals, by the way, that I have filled up. And when you use your joy journal to just write down the joyful moments or even to take the not so great moments and force yourself to write out the silver lining about them, it's amazing to look back through them. My old journals, I can't look at my old journals. I think I threw them away last time Chips and I moved because I would open it up and it was just heartbreak and depression and it was terrible things that were happening to me and ruminating and ruminating and ruminating for pages and pages and pages about all of the, the ways that things were so hard and how would I endure. I can't look at those journals. I truly think that I just chucked them in a dumpster last time Chips and I moved. I, honestly, I just packed my house. I don't remember seeing them. I threw them away because they were that depressing. And they didn't, they did not give me strength when I wrote that kind of journaling. Joy journaling, however, changed my life and gave me strength. And I have probably half a dozen, maybe more, probably maybe eight or nine joy journals now, three of which I have filled from front to back just since moving in with chips. So you can see how much our relationship has just made joy thrive in my life too. And he gives me joy journals as gifts now. Every time he sees that I'm getting close to the end, he gives me joy journals as gifts. And at the end of every day, we'll be laying there in bed, falling asleep. And I'll be like half asleep, falling like just into the abyss of, of sleep. And we'll ask each other, what were your three? And we'll talk about the three moments of joy in our life to one another. And it's amazing. I'm almost crying because of how amazing it is to be able to turn to your, your best friend, your partner, your mate, and to be able to talk about the things you're joyful for and hear from their perspective the things that brought them joy to that day. I think it's actually made our relationship super strong that way too. So that's what joy journaling has done for me. Normal journaling doesn't work. Joy journaling where you force yourself to look at the silver lining of situations that are bad, or you just focus on tiny things like having clean socks or a nice hot cup of tea or the big things like traveling to Baldhead Island that happened that day. 
those are really fun to open up, flip back through, and see your life, your history, transform before your eyes. To be able to see, we, we tend to remember the bad things. So to open up my joy journals and to see the good things and to see the beauty that happened in my life that I've already forgotten about because you tend to remember the bad things makes you feel so different. It makes you feel like you're not hounded by a dark, shameful past. Like you were sustained by love and you're, you're surrounded by love and your future is going to be full of love and joy. That's what it feels like. So that's where I'm at, you guys. And my mom's not there. My mom's on the other path. After her classes ended, she didn't do her gratitude journal anymore. They were gratitude journals and I started calling them joy journals because I love alliteration. <laughs> And my mom has a really hard time still. And she is clinically depressed and she has been my whole life. And there's a lot to be said for that. But now, now things are very overwhelming for her. And even when really good things happen, she only kind of gets to enjoy it like a, like, like a bubble. It's almost like good things in her life are like when you blow through a little bubble thing and you watch the bubbles form and they spin through the air and they're so pretty and some of them last for longer than others and then they pop and disappear. Whereas my joy is like roots, deep, deep tree roots that launch themselves in the ground and flourish and grow and arch overhead into beautiful canopies as time goes on. My mom's joy is very, because I, I maybe because she doesn't get to remember it, maybe because she just experiences it in that brief moment and then it pops and she's forgotten about it. Because, maybe because she doesn't have a book to open up and to read and reread whenever things are hard and to remember the kind of joy she has in her life. Maybe that's why. But my mom's joy is very much like blowing through bubbles and watching them spin through the air and then pop. And she has a lot going on in her life too. But I'm never going to forget how I think the root of the happy person that I am now and the optimistic, loving person I am now. I think the root of it started when I was in my darkest and I was a person I hated and I wasn't getting much done in life. But I got to turn to my left and look at my mom smiling for, and looking happy and optimistic for one of the first times in my life. And I, I wanted to see more of that in her. And that's why I started the gratitude journal. And for me, it changed my life because I, I stuck with it. I stuck with it for years. And that one tiny thing done over years changed me into who I am now. And I really, really, really wonder sometimes what it would have been like if my mom had stuck with it too. And I, I mean, I wish, I almost wish I could trade places with her, you know? <laughs> but that's a very serious conversation for what it's like to live with a parent who has clinical depression and has always had clinical depression. And so my memories of her and who she is as a person are colored by that. That's a very serious conversation I'm willing to have another day because I feel like there's not really anyone else to talk to when it's your parent <laughs> who has the depression and, and when you have to separate yours from theirs and when you have to figure out what to do in life. So that's another conversation and I don't want to end things on a sad note. I just want to show you guys that's why I feel like it's so important and that's why I talk about it so much because joy journaling can change your life in my opinion and it doesn't happen overnight but oh, fine if you guys are gonna fuss at me about the price of my roses <laughs> i'll lower the price then take that there ten dollars off ten dollars off from my precious little rose bushes oh gosh and look at all these seeds oh gosh are these seeds gonna be worth much yeah they're worth, uh, they're worth all right they're worth all right can i sell the ah, you can't sell them until they bloom so we're just sitting like on all these things and waiting for them to bloom but yeah i don't want to end things on a sad note but I do want to just let you guys know there's the contrast. There's the contrast. And if I have anything I wish I could get up on a soapbox and do, it would be joy journaling. Like, you guys, do this. It changes your life. Trust me. I was in the darkest depths of awful, black, evil chaosness. And now look at me. Now look at me. I can smile. <laughs> look at my mom. She didn't stick with it. She still can't smile. <laughs> she did for a little while there, though. So there's that, you guys. And yeah, so yes, just a silly girl. That was very, very rambling and I went on for a long time. But I mean, the more I talked, the more I realized this is something I feel intensely passionate about for deep personal reasons, but also because I do believe it can, it can change a whole bunch of people's lives. So I hope maybe this inspired some of you to start joy journaling and not only to start it, but to stick with it. It didn't happen. Change like this didn't happen for me overnight. 
but it did happen over a period of one year, two years, three years. I think it's been almost six, seven, eight years since I started this. And that sounds so long. If you had told me back then, hey, eight years from now, this is going to pay off. I would have just been like, then I'm not doing it. That takes too long. But I mean, come on. If there are things you could have told the self of you, like yourself to do eight years ago so that you could benefit from it eight years in the future, there's probably a long list. <laughs> So I hope you guys are encouraged to start. One of my dreams is to like maybe give away joy journals to people. <laughs> I seriously want to do that as a giveaway on my vlog channel. Just be like, okay guys, I'm going to give away some joy journals. And like you guys can enter giveaways for joy journals. I, I would be, I guess like Oprah, I guess. You get a joy journal. You get a joy journal. Everybody gets joy journals. Grab funky colored pens. It's more fun when you alternate between the colors on the different joy moments. Because that's what I do. I alternate between green and purple in my joy moments. And yeah, I wish I could give everybody that. So maybe one day I will. And I hope at least for now, you guys can maybe give yourself that. And I'm also trying to start a joy journal for my entire family, where I pester them on Facebook and messengers and call them almost every day. And I go, hey, hey, what was your joy moment for the day? And I want to collect all of those moments pretty soon. And I want to put them into like a little book and give it to everybody uh, on Christmas as a Christmas gift. So we can see like half a year of our family's joy right there in a book. And I think that that would be really transformational too. Because it's so easy, especially because both my parents are disabled, my brothers are autistic, and there's a lot of chaos going on in life all the time. And a lot of struggles. It's so easy to focus on those things. I'm really hoping that even if I'm the only one standing up on the Joy Journal soapbox in my family anymore, maybe I can help them ha be happy and, and have that kind of reflection in the future too. So I don't know, check the vlog channel to see if I have any progress on making a family joy journal. That's a lot harder because now I have to like go around like a, a little frantic morning, like messenger dove or something to each of my family members and be like, hey, 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 what was something good that happened to you today? Hey, hey, hey. So I don't know how successful it'll be, but I think it's worth it. All right. And I hope you guys are all having a wonderful day. I'm going to stop rambling on this and move forward on other things because uh, there's so much to do before the movers get here today. But thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for relaxing with us. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.